Chakravarti and I am an assistant professor of history here at Vivekananda College, Kolkata. Today I will be talking about the colonial legacy of India's border dispute. India's foreign relations since independence has been largely dominated by her border disputes with China and Pakistan. India and China share 3,488 kilometers of border. In fact, India was the first non-socialist country to establish relations with the People's Republic of China. In 1962, the border conflict led to a serious setback in bilateral relations. India-Pakistan boundary, on the other hand, is the result of partition in 1947. Since independence, the two countries have fought four wars. Today, the northwestern portion of Kashmir remains under control of Pakistan army and is marked as Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Though diplomatic tactics have evolved over the course of past 75 years, India's relation with her two neighboring countries is still volatile. This paper delves into the colonial legacy of these border disputes as many of these disputes were precipitated as a result of treaties, legislations and territorial boundaries drawn by the British Indian government. With this, the paper intends to present a deeper and more nuanced understanding of the history of India's foreign relations in the South Asian subcontinent. The long-standing border issues between India and China stretches throughout different regions of the Himalayas. In the eastern sector, China claims large portions of the state of Arunachal Pradesh, which is now under the Indian control. At the western sector, China claims Aksai Chi, which it believes is a part of its Ladakh region. The issue got larger public attention in the recent past due to ringing repeated military standards. However, the origin of these disputes dates back to the colonial era. The Ladakh region, once part of Tibet, was annexed by the Sikh army in 1842. The Dogra-Tibetan war was fought between the forces of the Dogra governor Gulab Singh of Jammu and the Tibetan forces. Jammu at this time was part of the Sikh Empire and Tibet was under the protectorate of the Qing dynasty. A battle was fought near Chusu in 1841-42 that led to the defeat of the Tibetan army. With the Treaty of Chusu, Tibet recognized that Ladakh was annexed to the Sikh Empire and the Sikh Empire relinquished the ancient Ladakhi claim to Western Tibet. The first Anglo-Sikh War of 1845-46 saw the defeat of the Sikh army by the British East India Company. With the Treaty of Lahore, the British East India Company took over Jammu and Kashmir, including the Ladakh region. A separate treaty called the Treaty of Amritsar was signed between the British and the Dogra governor Gulab Singh, by which the Kashmir Valley was sold to Singh. A new princely state of Jammu and Kashmir was formed with Singh as the new Maharaja. In return, Singh accepted the suzerainty of the British. This was for the first time the emerging British Indian Empire shared a common border with China. But both parties respected the natural boundaries and took no effort to demarcate the border on map till 1865. In 1865, the British officials appointed a survey officer, William Johnson, to carry out a survey and draw a boundary line between British India and the Chinese Empire. Johnson had previously worked as a surveyor in the Kashmir region. Starting in 1862, he worked from Leh in Ladakh surveying all the way up to the Chinese frontier. Johnson suggested that the border of the Dukra state touched the Kunlu Mountains north of the Karakoram Range. He placed the entire Aksai chain as a part of Kashmir. The Johnson line received further endorsement 
from the chief of the British military intelligence, Sir John Ardak. After some modifications, the Ardak Johnson line became the northern boundary of the British Indian Empire. Ardak was concerned about the possibility of Russian expansion as China weakened and found this boundary as more defensible. Though the Johnson Line was never officially presented to the Chinese, in 1893 a senior Chinese official in St. Petersburg provided maps of the region to George McCartney, the British Council General at Kashgar. The maps broadly coincided with the Arthur Johnson Line. In 1899, the British government proposed a reversed boundary to the Chinese. This boundary made the Karakoram Mountains a natural boundary between the two empires. It placed the Lingse Tang Plains in India and Aksai Chin proper in China. This boundary was preferred by the British on several grounds. It placed the Indus River watershed within the British boundaries and placed the Tarim River watershed under Chinese control. Placing this territory under Chinese control would create a further obstacle to Russian advance in Central Asia. The British presented the mccartney macdonald line to the Chinese in 1899 in a note by Sir Claude MacDonald. The Chinese government did not respond to the note. In 1933, a pro-Russian leadership was established in Xinjiang. Followed, following this, Russia carried, Russia carried out several mining surveys in China. The increasing Russian activities in neighboring China and its territorial surveys alarmed the British Indian government. The British government now abandoned the mccartney macdonald line and shifted their stand back to Johnson line by claiming the sovereignty on the whole of Aksai Chin. However, no measures were taken to establish border outposts or create physical demarcation of the border with China. This policy was continued until the independence of India in 1947. When it comes to the eastern sector, British India and China shared no common border before 1862. After the annexation of Assam and subsequent areas during the anglo burmese Wars, British Indian government gained control over the Brahmaputra Basin and extended its borders up to China. Traditionally, Tibet had been a protectorate under Chinese Empire. But following a British invasion in 1903, the Qing government in China decided to bring Tibet under its direct control. In 1913, taking advantage of the weakening central control, Tibet declared its independence. When the newly formed Republic of China laid claims to all territories of the previous Chinese Empire, Tibet approached Britain to secure its boundaries against Chinese interference. Henry McMahon, the Foreign Secretary to the Government of India, was eager to create a buffer territory between India and China. To demarcate the border between the three neighbors, Britain, China and Tibet, a conference was organized by the British Authority at Shimla in 1913. Chen Ifen, was nominated by the Chinese government as its representative. Mat Mahon was to represent Britain and Longchen Shatra was nominated by the Dalai Lama. At the convention, the British government proposed the Mat Mahon line as the boundary marking the Himalayas as the natural border. It pleased the Tawang region inside India. After several rounds of discussion, Tibet agreed to sign the agreement. However, Chinese representatives raised objections to the final map and returned without signing the accord. Initially, Britain showed no seriousness to demark the border on the ground and took no step to claim their sovereignty in the border regions. However, by late 1930s, 
the British were increasingly interested in establishing direct control over the tribal region of Tawang. By 1947, the British Indian government was able to establish the Indo-Tibetan frontier as part of the McMahon Line. After independence, the Indian government reorganized the hill tracks and constituted the Northeast Frontier Agency or NEFA in 1951. Later, NEFA was renamed Arunachal Pradesh and given full statehood status. It became the 24th state of the Indian Union. Following the liberation of China in 1949 and annexation of Tibet in 1954, the Indian sovereignty in the region was questioned by Beijing. The Chinese rejection of the McMahon Line at the Shimla Convention was cited as the cause. For India, the McMahon Line remained the border between India and China. Both the countries failed to resolve the disputes through dialogue in 1960 and fought a war to claim sovereignty in this area. China, was, China still claims its sovereignty over whole of Arunachal Pradesh and object to the visits of high-level Indian authorities into this area. The boundary between India and Pakistan was the result of the partition in 1947. Since independence, both countries have fought four wars, their disputes mostly centering around the Kashmir region. Before independence, Jammu and Kashmir was a princely state under the protectorate of the British Empire and ruled by Maharaja Hari Singh, the last king of the Dogra dynasty. Kashmir was no exception. At that time, there were around 570 princely states in the Indian subcontinent. The rulers of these states had signed treaties with the British government. While the rulers of these states enjoyed considerable autonomy in their internal governance, their armies and external relations were subjected to regulation by the British Indian government. The Indian Independence Act was announced by the British Prime Minister Attlee on 18th July 1947. It stated that with the transfer of power on August 15th, all princely states would be freed of their obligations to the British Empire. They would then be free to join either India or Pakistan or choose to remain independent. The states of Gwalior, Bekaner, Patiala and Baroda were the first to join India. Others were wary, distrusting a democratic government led by the Indian nationalist leaders and fearful of losing their influence as rulers. Sardar Ballabhai Patel was appointed the first minister for home and state affairs of India. He was given the responsibility of forming an united and secure India in time for the transfer of power. Patel was recognized by his peers as a man of integrity and practical acumen. Patel asked V.P. Menon, a senior civil servant, to become the secretary in charge of the Home and States Ministry. Together, Patel and Menon devised a formula to propose to the rulers of these princely states. The instrument of accession was the official treaty that would be signed in between the government of India or the government of Pakistan and a princely state. Actually, the concept of the instrument of accession was first introduced in the Government of India Act of 1935 by the British Indian government. Interestingly, this instrument of accession became important during 1947 for integrating the princely states into India or Pakistan. According to the basic tenets of the treaty, the government of India would control only foreign affairs, defense and communications, leaving all internal issues to be administered by the state. Once the instrument of accession was signed, the state would be represented in the Constituent Assembly of India, thus becoming an active participant in framing the new constitution.
Patel assured the monarchs that after acceding to India, they would be allowed to retain their property and estates. Further, they would be fully eligible to run for public office. For the loss of their income, the monarchs would be compensated with a privy purse. From June to August 15, 1947, more than 550 princely states signed the instrument of accession with India. Maharaja Hari Singh, a Hindu king of a Muslim majority Kashmir, was equally hesitant about acceding to India or Pakistan. He felt his Muslim subjects would not like joining a Hindu majority nation. On the other hand, he wanted to avoid joining India. He personally believed that Kashmir could exercise its right to stay independent. This belief was backed by Sheikh Abdullah, the leader of Kashmir's largest political party, the National Conference. However, both India and Pakistan coveted this Himalayan kingdom. Hari Singh signed a standstill agreement with Pakistan but did not make his decision by August 15th. Pakistan was concerned about the delay and wanted to prevent any possibility of Hari Singh joining India. On October 1947, Pakistan permitted tribal militias to cross northwest frontier into the state of Jammu and Kashmir. They received support from irregular Pakistani forces. India offered military assistance to the Kashmiri government on condition that the Maharaja would sign the instrument of accession with India. Maharaja Hari Singh finally signed the agreement on 26 October 1947. The instrument of accession guaranteed limited access to India in Jammu and Kashmir on matters of defense, communications and foreign affairs. In return, the Maharaja declared the accession of the state to India. In 1948, National Conference leader Sheikh Abdullah became the Prime Minister of Jammu and Kashmir. In 1949, Sheikh Abdullah and Maharaja Hari Singh agreed that Jammu and Kashmir should remain united with India with the state retaining maximum possible autonomy. A special status was given to the state of Jammu and Kashmir by the Indian constitution under Article 370. This article exempted the state from the Indian constitution except from Article 1 and Article 370. It allowed the state to frame its own constitution. As per Article 370, state of Jammu and Kashmir had total control over all the items of the union list except defense, foreign affairs, finance and communication. It also restricted the Indian Parliament's legislative power in respect to Jammu and Kashmir. On August 2019, the Government of India revoked the special status of Jammu and Kashmir under Article 370. Three of the four wars fought between India and Pakistan have been regarding Kashmir. The Indo-Pakistan War of 1947 ended in December 1948 and the ceasefire line or CFL was established to demarcate the administrative segments of Kashmir. The war of 1965 ended after thousands of lives have been lost. India recorded a victory but heavy damages were incurred by both nations. The Kargil War of 1999 was the first ground war between the two countries after they had developed nuclear weapons. The conflict led to heightened tensions between the two nations. Today, the northwestern portion of Kashmir remains under the control of Pakistan and is marked as Pakistan administered Kashmir. In 1962, China occupied Aksai Chi. In conclusion, we can say that India and Pakistan share geographic, linguistic and cultural ties, but their relation had been complicated due to a number of historical and political events. However, at present, South Asia is facing major challenges related to climate change. And both these countries must work together 
to address common issues such as climate change, disaster mitigation, water management, and overall socio-economic development of their population. As for China, India's strategic experts have frequently emphasized the need to enhance India's defense capabilities. This has often translated into increased defense spending on part of India. At the same time, India and China are focusing on comprehensive national development based on solid economic and technological policies. In 2007, India-China trade was worth 38 billion US dollars in value. In 2009, India-China trade overtook India-US trade in value, making China India's top trading partner. Growing economic ties between two, these two nations have become one of the most promising aspects of their bilateral relationship. And with this, we come to an end of today's discussion. Thank you for joining and listening to me.